Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the stream. Welcome back to another video. And this will probably be the last video of this series. We are working on this guy right here. Um, that is the Flak Panzer Gepard 135th scale by Tamiya. This kit, of course, was built in like uh, 1977, I think, is when Tamiya first came out with this particular kit. Um, in part one of this series, I mentioned that this is an old German World War II tank, and I was totally wrong, okay? It's not World War II. I Judging by the fact that it was in the 70s, I, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly when they came out with it. Uh, maybe it was around the Korean War era, or maybe... No, it can't even be Korean War. That's too long ago. Vietnam War? Maybe? I don't know. You guys who know more about historical war stuff, you can leave a comment down below or let me know what's going on. Anyway, I know this kit was built in the late 70s. And Tamiya still offers it today. Um, you can buy them and go down to the hobby store and you can still buy them today, even this old kit. So, anyway, that's enough rambling. Let's get started. So, we're pretty much finished. I got the camo done. Um, camouflage is finished and as you can see by the nice shininess I've put a clear coat over it a nice shiny gloss clear why gloss well because of the decals I've also put the decals on you can see one is right there there's another one on the back of the tank and there's a couple on the turret we've got our um, let me crank these up um, our German marking right there and the number designation on the back um, I chose 416. I don't know what the relevance is, but that's it. So, our black, green, and brown camouflage is all finished. She's nice and shiny. We're basically doing final assembly. And then we're going to do a little bit of weathering. I'm not going to do a whole lot because it is kind of a more modern-ish tank. And um, I don't want to go like, hey, this thing's really beaten up and damaged and stuff like that. That's not what I'm going for with this one. So, put this aside right now because I've got to put the tracks on. Okay, now, I've already got one side done. Okay, one side of the tracks is already put on there. And uh, so I'm getting ready to put the other side on. So, we'll just set that down like that and I'll change cameras and you can get a little bit better look at it. So, let's change this. Here we go. All right, so, got their wheels on. Uh, we have our cog that's going to go on the back here. This is the actual drive axle. There we go. And we have this one. If you guys are building this kit, you'll notice there's two wheels that are different than the rest of them. And the only way to tell is by the, the center hub is different from those two. And that's it. Pay no attention to these women over here. <laughs> They're just little painting projects. They're not naked. They're not naked. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I just haven't gotten around to them yet. Okay, so here's our tracks. I have used CA glue to connect the them together. And so, I want to put that kind of up top here in the middle area. That's going to be hidden underneath the, the skirt. And so, just want to fit this around the cog there and kind of set that in, get it lined up. There we go. Okay. And we're sort of where we need to be. We're pretty close. Last thing we need is this wheel here. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. So I want this wheel in there. And the beauty of rubber tracks is you can stretch it a little bit to fit that axle through, just lining it up. There we go. Just finesse it on there. 
and there we go. Push down all the way, and that track is on, just like that. And I've got the center thing around there, and I've got a similar spot here, and it doesn't really matter exactly where it goes, it doesn't matter at all. Although the way this is glued together, it doesn't uh, look that great, but as I said before, the skirt's going to come down over the side here. It's going to come down like so and totally hide the upper track. So you're not even going to see it. So you don't even have to really worry about it. Okay. So with our tracks finally on and they are ready, we can put this guy on. So remember I told you last time we got a, a rubber piece here, a PC, piece of PC. And it's going to line up on this pin here. You can't really see because it's so dark. I'm sorry about that. And then, oops, I've got some goop in there. Don't need that. Clean that up. Make it, boy. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> How's it going? So, that goop that I used to clean up or to uh, do the camouflage. I got a little bit in there. I didn't clean that out. So I didn't even know it was in there till now. All right. <clears throat> so we line up our little three little things at the back, our little guides. And then we have our little fitment issue. Do I? No, snapped right in. No problem. It's in. See? It's in. All I gotta do is glue it. <laughs> That's perfect. I guess before, um, when I had this together before, it didn't look like it fit very good here, and I was like holding it down and pressing. But for, for some reason now, this lines up pretty good right along this seam. So I don't know what's changed, <laughs> but it fits better. So I'm just gonna run a little bit extra thin along here to get that mated in along here now with it all painted and everything I don't want to go too heavy with the glue I don't want to be pulling the paint out from there check if there's any other places I could put glue to help seal the front together. That looks pretty good. Okay. So there we go. Now we have our skirts. So let's put this on its side. Now the skirts pretty much look identical except for this one little piece sticking out here okay and that's what designates let me see you get the different you can see that little peg sticking out there see it on my hand that one little spot sticking out that's the only difference between the front the left and the right okay I look at this same one and that little spot is on the back here okay so which way does it go well you want this little thing here sticking out you want that towards the front that's how it goes and that's going to line it up there and then this just sits in like that okay now they have it so it will rest on this little back piece back here there's not a lot of attachment points at the front along the side except on the back here there 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 we have a little notch here that's going to line up here that's how you can tell you've got it in the right spot which is basically right behind this one, um, I don't know if it's a hinge or whatever they, they have it, but that's how it's going to sit, and it's going to sit just like that, okay? So, let's use some of this thicker stuff. And I'm going to do it 
do a few dabs along here and along these points. And at this very back here. Okay, that should be enough. It's probably more than enough to get it to sit and hold where it's supposed to. So we're going to line it up at the front here. We make sure it's all hold in nice. And there we go. Turn this around so I can get my view of the side. It kind of wants to sit, it wants to lift up a little bit. So I think I might just, how heavy is the jar compared to, which one's heavier? Let's go with the glue jar. Just set that down there to give it a little bit of weight. I could theoretically just turn the tank over and let the, the weight of the tank hold it down. I'm not happy with the, how that's sitting on. It's not really holding. So, it might be a job for the extra thin Sometimes you just need that. The, the extra thin I have is the fast acting one. You yeah, see this part didn't glue at all. Okay, that seems to be holding now. All right, so there is the left side done. Okay, so now we're going to do the same for the right. Okay, um, hesitant to just put it down like that. So let's just put it on its tracks. It's going to hold, but I just want to make sure. You know what I mean? So this is going to go on similar fashion, just on this side. Okay. side now knowing what the other side was like okay gonna line it up and it sits in place pretty good this side I think sits a little more into its slot where it's supposed to better than the other side did. It doesn't want to lift. Oh, there, now it lifted.
There we go. We'll put a little more. Just to help. Okay. So that's that. And that's it for gluing. There's nothing more to glue on this thing. It's just a matter of put the turret on. And that's it. Ta-da! It's finished. But we're not done. The actual assembly is done. But, but that's it. So that turns, this turns. That's pretty cool. We got this guy here, we got our guns that, although they tend to stick a little bit, we have this guy, it's the radar, that turns back and forth and it goes up and down. And that's that. Anyway, we gotta weather this thing a little bit. So I think I'm just gonna do some dust effects. Okay, so I have my dust effect um, AK dust effects this here I think that's really all I need to do um, I don't think I need to really do more than this but um, yeah Okay, so I'm just going to take the turret off for now. Now, another reason for the clear coat on here is if you don't use a clear, what I've found, at least with Tamiya paints, I'm not sure, I don't airbrush with Vallejos um, very much anymore. I get sick and tired of the tip drying that I get with Vallejo paints. Um, maybe it's because I'm putting too much in the cup and I'm trying to do too much for a long time and the Vallejo paint is drying on me. That could be why I get so much tip drying with Vallejo that I don't get with Tamiya. <clears throat> anyway, that's a whole nother ball game with that. Anyway, clear coat on this because if you, when you go to do your weathering stuff, the paint kind of absorbs it and then you, it, you can't really spread it around like you would like to. And it makes it a bit of a chore. Um, I think it was my F-18 uh, build where I had done the clear coat on the top, but I didn't do it underneath. And as I started doing my panel line wash and stuff like that, it just see it just soaked into the paint, and that was and it became a real bit of a nightmare. It was a lot of work to uh, to get rid of it. Okay, so dust effects. I'm basically just going to kind of go around on these panel lines and uh, kind of go a little bit crazy, but not quite. I'm going to be cleaning up most of this anyway, so it's not going to be... It's not going to look as as terrible as as it does right now basically just thinking where dust would accumulate that they don't clean up and uh, yeah and that's basically the my thinking behind this Maybe on these little holes, I don't know. Would dust collect in those holes? Probably. Would be my guess. Any spot that, you know, it just doesn't get a lot of. You know, a lot of activity on it. I'm not a huge fan of the doing it like panel line, but 
at the same time, if it's a hatch that doesn't get opened all the time, crap is going to go in, inside of it. And, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to dab it in all these holes. I don't really know how in how realistic this is. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be interesting to look at because it's really going to make all the detail pop out, right? And with this paint scheme being kind of dark, um, yeah, you, you, you know where I'm getting at with this, right? So, and I'm kind of just slathering this on here. Because it doesn't really matter. A good 70 to 80 percent of this is going to be washed, cleaned out, and washed away anyway. So. Front here. <clears throat> okay work on the sides a little bit. Basically, I'm like I said before, I'm not going for a really dirty beat up look. Just kind of a little bit used, but not too crazy. You know, I'm not I'm not going for fresh off the fresh out of the warehouse. You know, but at the same time, this is definitely something that's you know being used. <clears throat> Not necessarily seeing action or anything like that. Well, maybe it has. Has this guy seen some action? Maybe he's seen a little bit. He's fired a few rounds here or there. figure the back is going to be where you're going to get a lot of dust. So put it on kind of everywhere. to the other side. We even get fingerprint dust. <laughs> By the time I'm done on the turret, this should be dry enough to start cleaning up.
So that's where we're going to leave that. I'm going to let that sit. I'm just going to put this... Oh, we're not done. Not quite done. I forgot this. All right. Now this is done. I'm just going to put this over here for now. And we'll grab our turret. <clears throat> Same kind of deal with the turret, although... Because of all the nooks and crannies on the turret, I don't want to make it... I don't want to put so much that it's actually hard for me to get in and remove it. Like, I'll put a little bit around here, and maybe around here, but that's about it. I think the turret is probably going to be a spot that sees a little more maintenance and a little bit more attention paid to. Spots like along here, probably not so much, you know. Some of it is going to be just about kind of blending it. Blending it in. say as I continue to do more. <laughs> All right. Let's blend that a little bit better. All right. So I'm going to put this away. <clears throat> Not going to need that no more. Clean up my brush here. It's pretty funny, you know, when you're cleaning your brush. You may not notice that it's dirty until you actually use like a harsh cleaner, like pure lacquer thinner. And all of a sudden, I've got stuff coming out of these bristles that I had no idea was there. It's just cleaning off old paint like I had. I was painting with black earlier, and now it's clearly cleaning them up more and more as I do this. Almost need. Uh, sonic cleaner or something to really clean it up. There we go. Now we're coming clean. All right. <clears throat> now we definitely don't want lacquer thinner for cleaning this stuff up. We want white spirits. So I have the AK Interactive white spirit. And uh, as I <laughs> loudly slam that down, so let's put that back and now let's grab this. This should be dry enough to start playing around with. So I'm going to grab a couple of Q-tips. 
and dip one end in let that sit we don't want it super wet unless you want to blend it all in everywhere then you'd want to super wet but for the most part I just want it I want to clean up a lot of my excess right like that now another option would be um, you can grab a nice soft brush and do this get it wet dry it most of the way and kind of soften up soften up the edges and blend it right and do this clean it up and blend it and you get a general a much more generalized thing now I've put a lot of this stuff on so I need to do a lot of cleanup on it right but you get the idea right <clears throat> if I really want to blend it good actually because this is clean, I've got one that's a kind of a dirtier one. This would be more for just general blending, cleaning up most of it. But if I'm going for a dusty look, this is a better, better choice. Because we're going to just kind of blend it all in everywhere. Almost like this thing's been out in the desert or something like that and it just never got cleaned or washed, right? But you can still do that and clean it up. I uh, almost went in with a full, fully wet brush and I don't want to do that. So the more you do, the more it'll clean up. And because I've used lacquer as my clear coat it won't eat through to the paint and that's the main thing right you don't want it eating right through your your base color, right? You're basically just reactivating that color. If it's like, oh, I think there'd be some streaks or something like that going along there. You can do that. And you make the streaks with your brush strokes, right? So to give you that kind of like, oh, it's, uh, it's rain, right? Rain has caused this, and that's what this is all about. And that's kind of the thing, right? Tanks are not really, you know, they're not clean and pristine. You know, it's not like they run them through the automated washing machine, <laughs> you know, or they don't go through car washes. <laughs> that's what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Look at that, I just dipped my brush in and just totally went in hot with the thinner on the brush. Now 
the other thing you could do if you really wanted to clean up your stuff is actually go like this and give it a wipe and clean it right off, right? If you've just gone way too heavy and you're kind of regretting how much you've put on, you can do that. So I've just gone straight with straight out of the thinner bar jar on that. And now I'm just going to take my finger and just lightly wipe that away and clean that right up. Right? because I've got a little bit too much. I went a little too heavy. I didn't need to go so so heavy handed with all the with the wash. And that's why it just creates more work, right? If you go too heavy, it's not the end of the world. It just makes for more cleanup. It's really a, the only difference. this dust accumulation on the front um, more so because I think the angle of attack on this thing the 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 fact that it would rain you know it would rain down towards the front is realistic and will be a more realistic look Stippling is another good way to get a blend going. I think we're looking good there. One spot I did forget to do was underneath. So using my dirty brush, I'm just adding a little streaks there. Okay, let's focus on the back. Switch our focus to the back. Look how much I've got on here. This is going to be a lot to clean, which is why I'm doing so much. And I'm going to go all the way down with it to reactivate this because I've got so much, it's not realistic. Sorry if I'm taking it out of the picture on the camera, but there, there you go. I'm going to leave it that dirty on the back. Now let's do our sides sides are going to be basically just streaking it all the way down like this. Now of course I do have to reactivate the thing, reactivate all of it, so I'll do this. It gives me a nice even reactivation and pull it all down and clean up a little bit, pull it down, clean up my brush. 
do this all the way along. That's pretty good. I kind of like that. A little bit dustier at the back than it is on the front, so that works pretty good. I realize I don't have any on my mirrors. I think that's good. Now, for the wheels, um, just for realism's sake, I'm basically just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Wheels are going to be dusty. That's just the nature of them. If I wanted more realistic, I could actually... Could actually put some mud effects on them. Wheels are one of those things, right? They're kind of random. Okay, let's start on this side. Again, we're just going to go straight with the thinner and just do this to activate it all. Dry off and start pulling that color down. Again, the front is going to be a little cleaner slightly than the back. This side did not get as good of a glue treatment. You can see that's moving. Can't forget these guys. time. Looks like I totally forgot to do one wheel here. So I'm going to get my brush dirty and kind of add some. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I think that we're, we're looking good here. Is there any place I think we could do better? Yes. Maybe in the middle of this hatch. Clean it up a little bit. Maybe here. That's the beauty of this stuff. If you feel like you need to do more, you 
can always come back at it and attack it again. I feel like the center of this hatch is, should be a little cleaner. Then go ahead, clean it up a little better. That is the beauty of this stuff. So it gives you all kinds of time to perfect what you're looking for, the look that you want. You have all kinds of time to do it. It's awesome. Okay, so let's let this sit over here again. And now we'll do our turret. Now, as I said before, I didn't want to go crazy on the turret. So, we're just going to do a little bit of blending. And, uh, you know, we are going to be. It's going to be similar, but not quite so much. Kind of Stippling this a little bit here as you know maybe some spots where it's kind of you know we had a little bit of a rain puddle that was dirty and it didn't get washed away that happens quite often So we get like these little pools of, it's going to kind of look like shadow, but it's going to be a light shadow. decide to clean it up a little more but I don't think so I think I just might leave it because so I think I have a tendency just myself to clean it more than necessary I notice I do that with my Gundams I clean up my Gundam kits you know I'll, I'll go into it saying yeah I want it to look like it's been beat up a lot and it's really um, really been damaged and and stuff like that and then I make the thing and I wind up cleaning up so much of it that it doesn't look that bad at all and then I kind of regret it afterwards it's like oh I should have really gone a lot farther with my weathering and the rust and stuff like that and that always winds up being afterwards. And, uh, yeah. And I, I'm not sure why I'm like that. I think because I want to be more cautious or something. That's my guess, anyway, why I have a tendency to do that.
I think we're pretty much done. I think that's going to be just about it. Let's have another check on the top here. I might want to clean up just a little bit better in the middle there. That's pretty good. All right. A little too much here. Now it still does look kind of funny because it's got all this gloss clear coat on it. So it doesn't look quite look right, right? It doesn't look normal definitely doesn't look like it's supposed to but that's all going to be fixed with a flat clear coat that I'll be doing in a minute and that will totally change the look of this tank you hit it with a flat clear all of a sudden the thing becomes a real machine that is out being used by the military. <clears throat> so, with that being said, this side is done, or this part is done, but I need to glue that back on. So, as much as I thought this side fit a lot better, it didn't. It didn't hold up to the challenge of life. Should hold now. Okay. So, flat clear. That's next. Where is my flat clear? I got my semi gloss. I got lots of semi gloss. Where's my flat? I just use this stuff straight out of the can. To me, it's TS-80. Let's put this on the thing. dried hopefully now if any of the gloss still shows through I'll just give it another coat it's as simple as that so I'm gonna point these straight up
How's she looking? She's slowly getting flat. <laughs> She's getting there. I got it a little bit thick on the front here, so that's why it's taking still got a little bit of a sheen, but that's starting to flatten out everywhere else. And it's already very tacky, almost dry. So that's good. Good news. I'm gonna get to the turret another minute or two before I pick it up. It's another awesome thing about Tamiya's paints is they dry so fast. Um, yeah, it really is. Okay, since we're almost done, I want to thank you guys for watching this series and thank you for watching just in general. Thank you for the new subscribers that I've had on my YouTube just in the last week. Uh, thank you so much. Um, let's talk a little bit about my next build. My next build is kind of what I started building just before doing this. And that was the Korean F-15, the R-O-K-A-F. F-15K. I started building that thing and as I was getting into it and realizing the quality fit of the kit was not that great. Um, Academy just did not do a really great job on making that kit fit together well. And so I wind up searching the internet for another F-15K and nobody else makes an F-15K. Now, what is the F-15K? It's really just an F-15E, but America sold it to the South Korea, and so they call it the F they designated it the F-15K. So, who makes an F-15E in 148? Tamiya makes an F-15E in 132nd scale, and I don't want to go that big. Um, so, F-15E? Well, there's an option. Um, Great West Hobbies makes one. And I watched a couple of builds uh, on YouTube to see the quality, and it looks like a very good quality kit. So I ordered one. And so that's what I'm really gonna start off with. Uh, my next thing is gonna be the F-15E, but I'm building it as the F-15K, okay? That's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna use the decals out of the Academy kit, and that's what I'm gonna do. So really my next build is gonna be an F-15E slash K, and that's what that's gonna be. Now, this is kind of tacky, or no, it's, it's dry to the touch. Perfect. That is going to allow me to put some exhaust on there, because that's where this comes from. So I'm going to grab my pigment. I have black pigment in here somewhere. There it is. Black pigment. And... I am going to do that. Actually, before I do this, I'm going to do something that I've seen on... Oh, what's his name? Night Shift. He does this. He grabs his um, graphite pencils and he goes around on the edges like this to give it that metallic kind of look like to show you it's metal on these edges like this and he goes around just on all kinds of different random areas usually on all the edges and corners and stuff like that to give it that bit of a metallic sheen and so that's what I'm going to do give my tank that little bit of a slight little bit of realism I guess even if only a little bit. Corner of the 
bought of our storage boxes here. That kind of thing. A couple little odd bolts and things like that. Little, little things like that. On this thing, this is now dry to the touch. I definitely want to do that on our gun barrels. Definitely. Give them that little bit of a metallic sheen. Now I do already have these painted in gunmetal, but now I've just painted them with a flat um, so that will add just that little bit of a metal look. Another thing you could do, instead of this, you could just uh, grab some silver and dry brush it. And that will give you a similar, similar look. This is just going to be just that little bit more... You know what I mean? Looks just a little bit more metallic without it looking like it's, you know, the paint's chipped away. good on hatch bolts and things like that. There, I think that's more than enough. Okay, back to the pigment. Just scoop a bit out onto my brush here. And this is where all the exhaust is. So I basically just stipple this in here and it makes it extra flat black in there. And from what I've seen in some pictures, this stuff gets kind of everywhere this soot, ash kind of look everywhere around here. There we go. And we've got a nice nice dirty exhaust port and we'll do the same on this side. There we go. Yeah. Good. Done. That is done. Done and done. Put this back. Clean my brush. done. Put my 
graphite stick away. Okay, we can put our turret on. And ta-da, there we go. There is the 135th scale flag panzer Japard by Tamiya. There you are. With all my dust, making it look dirty and used which helps bring out the, all that detail too. And that's it. Done. Ta-da! Okay, so, like I said before, I want to thank you guys for watching and thanks for coming out. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, why not head over there and just subscribe. Um, buttons down below there, over here, over there, wherever they are. And uh, if you like this stuff, hit that like button also, and uh, leave me a comment down below. And uh, I'll put links to my Twitch and my Instagram. I'll take some still pictures of this guy, and I'll upload it to my Instagram like I do with every build I do. And so you can check me out on there if you feel like. And you can follow me on Twitch if you feel like, and you could comment and, and talk to me while I'm doing this stuff live, um, if you so choose. So anyway... I'm going to leave it like this. This thing is now done. Uh, instructions can go away. And uh, yeah. So, next I said is going to be the F-15. That's coming up next. And so, um, until then, we'll see you all in the next one.